Wow, you guys were wrong about everything. <laughs> Most truthful line in the entire series. <laughs> oh, Stephen is just so chill about how hearing how often he nearly ac- got kill- killed by his own caretakers in the first like few months of being alive. Oh. He's he's so happy about how Grizzle Gems don't know anything ever. <laughs> And about how the, you know, the first couple of years of his life probably consisted entirely of emotional agony for everyone around him and everyone watching this episode. Yeah. Like, oh, God, this is so emotive that it's almost physically painful to watch. Yeah. Like, not in a bad episode where it's a fantastic episode. It's just, oh, God. Everything about this situation is so sad. Anyway, this episode is three gems and a baby. In this episode, Greg is staying with Steven and the gems because of a blizzard happening. Steven thinks it's the first time he's seen it snow like this, but the gems point out that it happened when he was still a baby. Greg plays a song for the flashback, as he's now required to do. I love that little car. It's like, you know what you have to do, and he's like, okay, that's who you get for raising me to love music. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> as he remembers when he was crashing at Vidali's place during the storm. The gems show up with some interesting gifts for Steve, baby Stephen, let's just say. <laughs> they don't seem to comprehend, to fully comprehend what he is, so they make more gem-focused assumptions about him, let's just say. <laughs> After his gem glows for a tiny bit, they somehow consider the best course of action is to kidnap him until they figure this out. Greg chases after them as the gems slowly realize that their assumptions were completely false. And that's best to work together to raise Stephen. And that's that's basically the episode. That that severely undersells the amount of emotional trauma everybody goes through in the yes. process of figuring Stephen out. Okay, first, tiny baby Stephen is the cutest thing since baby sour cream. <laughs> yes. Oh my god! Look at his little dot eyes. <laughs> oh. Yeah. Uh, but then the song itself has to be pain because it's just. I could never be ready for this. It's emotional enough as a new parent song without taking into consideration the fact that he is a new parent who is dealing with the functionally the death of his partner. Like, yeah. the, you know, the way they phrase is always she gave up her physical form to be Stephen and they don't always treat it like death. But what has functionally gone on is a death in childbirth here. Yes. And that is extremely hard to deal with for everybody involved. It's hard for Greg to deal with, but he's got to look after the baby. And it's even harder for the gems to deal with because they have not a clue what a baby is or <laughs> why it could be. Or, you know, the bit that really sticks on Pearl is she has no idea why this would be so important to Rose to give up her life for. Probably the best part of the episode is when Greg just looks at the picture of uh, Fidelity's family. Yeah, Vidalia, Sour Cream, and Yellowtail, so she must have gotten together with, Ye- you know, this must be around when she's gotten together with Yellowtail. You know, she's not with the father of her baby, which is a good thing, because he's an asshole, but she's got a family to raise her kid with. Yeah. And he d- and he does not exactly have the most supportive support structure for raising Stephen. <laughs> no. It's just, I mean, the moment the, moment the gems turn up on his doorstep... Amethyst is cheerful because she's Amethyst and she also, you know, clearly doesn't fully get that Rose is gone. Garnet is Garnet, but Pearl just looks so agonized from the first moment we see her in this episode, you know. I mean, I don't think the gems do sleep, but if they did, she'd look like she hasn't slept in forever. She just looks so... And again, it's like, she's pale all the time. Why does she look even more pale and sad to me? I know. But just like Amethyst greets him as Stephen as Lil Rose, and Garnet's just like Amethyst. We've gone over this. And I'm just like, oh, ev- everything is suffering right now. Goodbye, cruel world. <laughs> yes. And that's just the beginning of it. <laughs> Hashtag Stephen Universe. <laughs> you watch the first episode, and it's just a little boy who eats cookies until his magic powers manifest. How could this be painful? <laughs> Isn't that the Ugh. meme? Like episode one, like uh, Stephen raps about Cookie Cat, and then like if it goes through all the later episodes, it's just how crazy, <laughs> hard wrenching it is. Yeah, 
I mean, it does dip in a funny for a while when they've got the gifts, because Garnet gives him a razor, which Greg is like, no, babies don't need that, and she's just like, he will in the future. <laughs> I just love the cheesy, like, sp- eye sparkles. Yeah. <laughs> in the future. It's like her kid's phrase or something. <laughs> I know. I love how when it was first revealed that Garnet could see the future, it's such a mega plot twist, and now it's just so casually, by the way, I can see the future. Yes. <laughs> Amethyst gets him adult diapers because she doesn't understand that he can't shape shit. She, she's about grasped the concept that he needs diapers. She just hasn't grasped the part where he can't shape shift to fit into them. Yeah. Pearl's idea of giving him a dictionary to teach him to communicate is... Again, it's one of those things that I love because it's a very outsider piece of logic. Like, any human knows that fundamentally that won't work. That's not how babies work. But, you know, these are women from such a different species that they don't understand that that's not how babies work. I just, I, I love all this stuff about just how alien the gems are. Yeah. Just, it, there's so many things that right aliens tend to really heavily base them on, like, humanoid just cultures and concepts and values and so on. And I just, I just always appreciate how Rebecca Sugar has got this fully formed very coherent and very alien social structure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> It's it's very well uh, thought out. And then this all leads into his gem glows when he laughs, because as, as we know now, his powers are tied into his emotions and he's stronger when he's happy. Yes. Um, but I love how this brings them through, through, again, through gem logic of what they know of how gems work. She can't shapeshift because she's trapped in a baby. She's a fusion now. <laughs> that, was, that might have been the best line. There's, there's a baby around Rose. No, the fa- my favorite line is when um, Greg is interrupting their theorizing, going, One, human babies don't glow. And letter number B, what if they do? <laughs> <laughs> Everything about that is golden. One, letter number B, the fact that, he- that he's got the new parent freak out of, There's so much I don't know about babies. What if they do glow sometimes? Yes. <laughs> it's a great baby joke. <laughs> The baby book. <laughs> it's, it's, it's babies, huh? <laughs> <laughs> what a great thing. Yeah, and, he, and of course he finds himself on the page about, okay, if your baby has a fever, but he comes out to find out that they've kidnapped his baby. <laughs> and I love how casual they are about this part in the present. Steven's like, you kidnapped me? <laughs> and Amethyst's just like, yep. <laughs> well, I love, I love Amethyst's line. Good thing we left without any explanation. <laughs> I I really can't tell if she's being like mildly sarcastic in that scene, or if she really believes that's <laughs> like oh. Either way, Amethyst, you adorable child. Yes. And then she shapeshifts in, into a baby to see if that's why Rose doesn't want to shapeshift <laughs> back from being a baby. And then Garnet holds, and she's like, "Okay, this rules." And I'm like, "Yeah, I want to get held by Garnet too." By the way, why why did she stay for a toilet for that long? What? Oh, because Amethyst. <laughs> okay. Because it, it it's another recurring thing that I love is how casually Amethyst takes the shape-shifting and how much she enjoys it compared to the other crystal gems. Yes. And then, and then you know, it gets on to Garnet trying to show Steven how to unfuse. Again, this is one of the things that Garnet being a fusion was such a huge plot twist and it is revealed and now it's so casual you're like, boop, look, Ruby and Sapphire. Yeah. But Steven starts crying because he wants Garnet back, which again, I find intensely relatable. <laughs> and just, they're, they're going through all this gem logic and, and it is fair enough because I mean, aside from, you know, the amount of panic that is taking care of a small baby for the first time, it's the fact that both species involved have no experience whatsoever. Like, nobody in the universe has any experience with this specific type of baby. This is a brand new kind of baby. <laughs> like, the human parent's not entirely sure what he's doing. Is it because babies do that kind of thing? Should babies not do that kind of thing? Should babies not do that kind of thing, but it's okay because he's a part alien baby? Yeah. He doesn't know. And the other half of the parental equation is three gay space folks who have no clue what a baby is or how to care for one. Yes. And just, oh, it got really intense the moment where 
Pearl was considering pulling the gem out of Steven. Because we we genuinely do not know what that would do to him. But at the very least, it looks like it would be painful. It's a pretty big gem, and he's a small baby, and that would leave a very big hole in a very small baby. (laughs) Yeah. So that and that was a really intense moment, and of course because it's a because it's a flashback, you know she's not actually going to hurt him, but it still manages to be just. And you just want to hug Pearl and cry forever because she she truly doesn't. Un- at this stage, she doesn't really herself care about Stephen, and she truly just wants Rose back. But she respects and en- but she cares about Rose enough that if Rose is willing to give up her life for this, it has to be important for her too. She can't risk what Rose gave up her life for. Is the, is the way I was reading that. Yes. <laughs> Though from my perspective, that is kind of messed up. That Rose is literal. That's literally the reason she decided to not accidentally kill a baby. Yeah, it, it is messed up. Well, I mean, in Rose's scabbard, you had you know the bit where Pearl lets Stephen fall and doesn't try to save him because. Yeah, but there, I think it was more that she. Just was unable to, to do anything at that point. Partially that, and just partially because in general, Pearl's trauma over Rose makes her do does some really messed up things to yeah. her. Yeah, and I like that in the present, she finally seems to be properly healing from that. Yeah, but you know, in the past, especially at this point, a few months after Rose's loss, where they're just. They don't know how to deal with this, and especially because I still, I really want the show to clarify at some point if. I mean, um, the video that Rose left Stephen implies that she knew she wouldn't exist anymore after Stephen was born, but I don't think it's ever been clarified if Greg or the other three Crystal Gems knew. Like, if they thought they were going to have Rose and this new baby, and then Rose is gone without them expecting it. Because I feel like that would be a heavy contributor to the amount of emotional trauma everybody's dealing with if they didn't know it was coming. Yeah. And also, just the way Pearl phrases it sounds like, you know, I mean, presumably if if Rose had told them that she's not going to exist anymore after this baby is born, you know, I have to assume that the gems would have asked her then, tried to get to her, explained to her, explained to them then why it was so important. But it sounds like she didn't. Rose Quartz is one of those fascinating characters that she's had. She's had such a positive influence on everyone around her, but she's also had some of her choices have left a really negative impact too. Yeah. So it's it's really complicated. It certainly is. But, you know, the end result is Garnet, bless her heart, being just like, this isn't about Rose. From now on, everything has to be about Steven. Yes. That's yeah. why he's the name. That's why he's the name of the show. Yeah. Everything is about Steven in the Steven Universe. Yeah. It was mm. also nice to see, like, a snowy episode for once. Because there's, really, yeah. there's literally only been, like, two, and one of them wasn't in Beat City, so... I also love how that leads to the great visual gag of Greg being like, how do I catch up to them? Dog. Sled. Dog. Sled. (laughs) And then like two minutes later he turns up and he's just running screaming from the dog that's chasing him and dragging the sled. (laughs) It's like, uh, I mean that worked. That didn't work how you probably wanted it to work, but it it worked. (laughs) You know, eventually. And that, that was a good just moment of... La- but it's one of those moments where you laugh really hard because you've just been through a lot of emotional trauma, so anything even slightly funny will make you laugh your ass off. <laughs> yeah. And how is that? And the moment back in the present where Pearl is giving Greg tea, which is nice. It's cute that she's giving Greg and Stephen tea. And she gives the tea bags to Amethyst to eat. Because <laughs> Amethyst is a genuine garbage can. Yes. <laughs> There are, there are a few other things to talk about. Uh, I love the line, Snowman and Snowman Jr., son of Snowman. <laughs> that was cute. Yeah. I, did you notice, by the way, that uh, Garnet stole a line from Connie and Steven from Steven's birthday? It's just a, bu- it's just a box I made to, to look like I took a really long time to, like, or whatever she said in that. <laughs> I was like, it's a, it, don't worry, it's been prepared to look like it's been lovingly wrapped or something like that when she's opening the yes. gift box, yeah. <laughs> I always wonder if she if that was from her future visit and she actually took that from Connie. <laughs> she could. She actually could. <laughs> yes. That would be amazing. I also love when uh, Pearl was trying to t- talk with the Rose. Can you hear us? Glow twice for Yes. <laughs> that was also great. <laughs> Just, 
I just love the idea, because it's just so... It's just such a silly way to do something so sad. Oh yeah, and it's, it's just one of those moments where it's like, it's such an intense moment, but uh, it's so ridiculous. Yes. Oh, by the way, uh, something I found uh, interesting is that in that, in that uh, fam- Vidalia family picture, sour cream seemed, actually seemed pretty tall. Like, I, when was that taken? Yeah. I'm I'm trying yeah I'm trying to figure out how old he's supposed to be. To be I mean present day Stevens fourteen and I'd put sour cream as like eighteen or nineteen at the oldest. Yeah, but he looked like he looked like at least like eight or nine in that picture. So yeah, unless he's in his low twenties. But I I mean I I thought it, I thought it's been stayed somewhere he's a teenager. Yeah, I'm pretty sure he's supposed to be a teenager according to everything. Yeah. No, he is. So he's, he's got like 90 at the oldest, so in that photo he'd be like 5 or 6 at the oldest. But to be fair, he is a pretty tall and lanky character. Yeah. And Yellowtail is really short, so it's quite possible Vidalia is just like stooping down next to both of them in that photo. <laughs> that That's my theory. But yeah, there was that episode. And now we wait for some more. <laughs> Hooray. They're just at whatever random interval they decide to provide us with more Steven Universe. I will just like, what is an update schedule? No one knows. But sometimes you can hear it howling on cold winter nights. Maybe the maybe the new schedule is that they'll do like an episode and a half every week, just for no reason. <laughs> so like every so like every other time Steven Universe starts, it just starts midway through the episode without even in like an intro. <laughs> and then after you get past the second half of that episode, then the next episode you get the intro again for no reason. Or maybe it's just like, you know, at random intervals, when you need it most, your TV just flickers to life, and there's a new episode of Steven Universe right there. Maybe they'll just randomly, maybe they'll just put it on unannounced in a time slot for something else. <laughs> like, I'll just think of what crazy ideas they have next for how to air this series. Oh, it's a, it'll just happen. Yes. Whenever, wherever.